make our kites uh, a little safer if they hit the water if we put a balloon on the rubber band. And that just helps the kite not sink. Okay. So one of the things we make for kite fishing is a hook. It seems kind of like a, not a real important part, but it serves a lot of purposes. It helps us to organize our, our cords. It helps keep the, it helps us keep the uh, cords organized, not only when you're sto storing it, but now when you plug it in, we keep the cord elevated off the deck so you never step on the cord. If you ever step on this cord while it's plugged in, you'll break the face of your receptacle. So it's pretty critical. And then on three occasions we've had on rough days, if we didn't have this cord, the whole electric reel goes out of the gunnel. And if it comes unplugged, it's free willy. So now we're chasing it down. You know, that little clip has helped us save a lot of, a lot of problems. So we're gonna unhook this, plug it in. All right, so we, we deploy kites by having a kind of a secondary uh, halyard and ring. That kind of helps retain the clips and it allows me to get clean air for the kite. So if I want to deploy this kite, I put my reel in free spool, a little bit of drag just so it doesn't backlash, get the rigger up about halfway, lock up the reel. See how this kite has leads on it, so that kite's gonna be a right kite. It's gonna angle like this. When I'm ready to deploy it, I go as far away from the boat as I can, put up the kite, and now I've allowed that kite to get out there in the clean air. <clears throat> so it doesn't hit the water. So now, kite never hits the water. Pull off a few leads. So we get this thing about halfway up again, light drag. So now I'm gonna lock up my reel, I'm halfway up, and I'm gonna put this rigger up until I can't reach any further. See, I got nice clean wind, deploys easily. Just taking three leads off, look at the difference in the attitude of that kite. Yeah, it doesn't wanna fall. Yeah, now it paints, now it's where yeah. it's gonna be. Yeah. So right there. But at least if the clips go up the line a little bit, I can pull down slow, up fast, see how? If you'll pull it down slow and walk it up fast, they come right to you. We have little tension knobs, which adjust the jaw tension. These rings are meant, or des th these clips are designed to fit these rings. If I were to take the pressure off this tension knob all the way, the clip would just fall out. So now the other important thing to do, if you're gonna put out a kite, you see how I just changed this line angle? You see how the line passes cleanly through that ring? That's very important. It's natural, you see how it looks backwards? This is the most common mistake people make when they put a, a ring in a clip. See, that looks right, but it's 180 degrees because when the kite goes out, that's what it's gonna do. So now if I'm gonna let this clip out, I'm gonna pull this ring, I mean this, uh, that clip inside the ring. So one little trick, if you're letting the kite out, if you'll adjust this drag lever where, you see I can just easily pull off line, but if I let go, it's not flying out there where the, it might pop that clip. Now as soon as the mark comes, I'm gonna jump these short and middle clips over that mark so we retain them. We put about 100 feet of line from our first mark to the kite. So you see how these clips wanna go out, but I now just jumped them. One more thing I'll show you on these clips. We tie a long taper on this floss mark and it helps retain that clip. Okay, so when we're letting this kite line out, we're gonna come to a first mark, which is a stopper mark. Not all kite lines have that, but we'll tie that typically on our kite line to help a clip See, this is the standard mark for that kite line. But if you were to pop this ring out, and it's a real windy day, and for some reason this jumped off there. Real windy days, believe it or not, it can blow, I've had them blow all the way to the kite. So by tying this little secondary mark, which the clip can pass over, but it's like a speed bump. It doesn't want to go over that. That just helps you retain your clips on a real windy day. Keeps it from flying up the kite line also. Right. So there's that's your angle. important for your middle and for your short, short on windy days because it's very aggravating. You fish as little lead as possible. Right. And when you see your corks blowing up, yeah. it's aggravating yeah. as an angler like hell. It'll blow up even with the bait on, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Yep. So now I'm retaining these clips by virtue of that ring. So now we're letting the, that long clip go, but you got about another 60 or 70 feet to the next mark.
So now you see how I got some drag on here. I can stop it easily because I put enough drag on this reel. This is something a lot of people overlook. The drag on this reel is critical, especially on a windy day, to make your life easy. Use the drag on this reel. Use the hook under the gunnel so you don't have to worry about a kite rod coming out of the gunnel or a kite line getting away from you. See right there, I can stop at any time. As a matter of fact, when we're kind of one mate operation, we'll put this, we call it chicken winging. See, see what I'm yeah. doing? I'm letting the kite line out just by moving my arm. Now I can be over here bridling. Putting the bait. Mate. Yeah. So when you're shorthanded, we chicken wing. So here's a similar deal. Here's your stop. Yeah, there's a stopper. And there's your floss mark. Yeah. You can tell these are well used. So Ray, while we're doing this, go ahead and stop that for one second. Yep. We know that you guys at r and Tackle make your own kite lines. Yep. So why don't you tell everybody what's different about yours than some most traditional kite lines that are out there? Most of the kite lines use swivels for the long in the middle and the short. We use swivels only on the short, typically. And that, that allows uh, the kite line to be 100% strength, strength through that long clip especially. The, the long clip's the critical one, because that's where you would use the tiniest swivel. Our clips are 1 16th hole, 1 8th hole, 3 16th, and 1 quarter. So for instance, uh, if you wanted to, if you only had a number one clip and a spare and a spare clip, and you needed a number two, you just drill a sixteenth. I mean, an eighth inch hole instead of the sixteenth. You now have. We make them kind of easy numbers so that you can create your own diameters. But anyways, these kite lines are made with the marks that will stop those clips. So obviously, the mark diameter has to be in between the two sizes. The other thing that makes that really good, guys, on the light windy days, the days when the wind is real light, all that terminal tackle, all those swivels adds to the weight of the kite and sometimes can keep the kite from really flying the way we want it Elevating, to fly. Elevating, yeah, and that's part of why I got into building those clips because they weigh a lot less than a black's clip with a metal tension screw and a metal arm. And so ours have synthetic tension screw and synthetic arm. And the multiple I mean, no swivels arm. to yeah. stop it where it needs to be stopped based yeah. on how they work. Well, the floss marks on okay. our long and middle and the swivel on the short. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So guys, if you like this video with Captain Ray continuing our R&R &R product line uh, videos, make sure you subscribe and click on the link below.